But the key word here is if you do it properly. There are rules to this. Here are the top five intermittent fasting mistakes that's preventing you from losing weight. What's going on guys? Carla McApinlack here from newbiefitnessacademy.com. I help busy professionals lose weight so they can feel more confident and get the most out of their lives. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every time I post a new video every week and make sure you follow me on Instagram where I post daily awesome fitness content just like this. Listen, in my opinion, intermittent fasting is one of the most powerful methods of weight loss. Its efficacy is unparalleled if done properly. It's one of the main strategies that I use with my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. But the key word here is if you do it properly. There are rules to this. And with any set of rules, mistakes are bound to happen along the way. Here are the top five intermittent fasting mistakes that's preventing you from losing weight. Number one, you're eating too much carbs. We're gonna start with this because this is a big one. This honestly prevents people from losing weight, period. But before we dive in too deep, we need to establish a baseline first, okay? If you just delete liquid calories, if you delete refined carbs like cookies, chips, pasta, pizza, if you delete excess sugar like, I don't know, fruit or candy, for example, if you delete fake foods like protein bars and granola bars, and if you eat a lot of nutrient-dense foods, if you revolve your diet around plants and animals, you're gonna lose weight. Intermittent fasting will just help you get there faster. And that's where mistake number one comes in. A lot of people get into intermittent fasting because they see all these crazy results. So they do it, they take care of the fasting part, but they don't really adjust their diet. And this is such a big mistake. If you've ever heard of the saying that you can't outrun a bad diet, well, you can't outfast a bad diet. Now, let's quickly talk about what happens to your body every time you fast, okay? So one of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting, and there's a lot of them, is that fasting regulates your insulin levels. This is important because insulin is what controls your body weight. All you need to know is that if your insulin levels are high, you cannot access your body fat for energy, okay? You just can't. So insulin, high insulin blocks fat burning. If your insulin levels are low, that's when your body taps into your fat stores for energy. And if you're trying to lose weight, that's exactly what you want. So if you keep eating a high carb diet, your body is in a constant state of dealing with all the glucose that's entering in your system. So if you have a lot of glucose in your system that raises your blood sugar levels and your body deals with that by raising your insulin levels to store all that glycogen into your cells. So if you keep eating a high carb diet, you're putting your body in, in this metabolic limbo where your body doesn't really get into a fully fat burning state. Because when you fast, you drop your insulin levels, but then you eat a high carb diet and then you spike it up again. You have this roller coaster ride where you're neither here nor there in terms of being a fat burner or a sugar burner. And again, being on a high carb diet makes intermittent fasting harder because again, you have to deal with that blood sugar crash that happens naturally every time you eat a high carb meal. And every time you have a blood sugar crash, your body thinks that it, it's going into a state of hypoglycemia. So your body sends hunger signals to your body that you need to eat again. This is why you need to eat every two or three hours if you're on a high carb diet. And if you don't eat, that is when you get hangry. Sound familiar? Now, if you wanna know how to eat properly, then make sure you stick around until the end of the video for instructions on how to download my Lean Body Blueprint. Number two. You're not eating enough. To piggyback off of mistake number one, this is the other side of that equation where you're not eating enough when you're doing intermittent fasting. You know, you try to do too much and this is typical crash dieter mentality, right? Is that you combine intermittent fasting with a low calorie diet. That is a big no-no. Because here's the problem with that is that if you do intermittent fasting, you're eating a lot of low calorie and low fat foods, you are doing more harm than good. Because usually low fat foods are A, highly processed because to make them low calorie, they have to take the fat out and B, they're higher in sugar content because every time they take the fat out, they have to replace that with something else. And that something else is sugar to make it taste good. So low fat foods are usually higher in sugar and food manufacturers sometimes mask this by using artificial sweeteners. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. And the problem with being in a low calorie but high carb diet, because low fat equals high carb and high sugar, so you're keeping your insulin levels high, is that you've not put your body in a position where your body is only burning the energy that you're taking in from this low calorie diet. Because remember, high insulin blocks fat burning. So let's say you're only eating 
like 1200 calories a day. If you do that over time, your body will eventually slow down your metabolism to 1200 calories because that's all that's coming in because your insulin levels are high. You can't access your body fat for energy. So your body then responds to this by lowering your metabolism. And that leads to weight loss plateau, fatigue, and you're just constantly hungry all the time. So when you're fasting, stay away from low calorie and low fat foods, stick to single ingredient foods, and make sure you're always eating to satiety. Mistake number three, you're using a crutch. Now I'm talking about, you know, your keto coffee or your bulletproof coffee here, where you're adding MCT oil and butter to your coffee. Now I'm not necessarily saying that those are bad things, but MCT oil and butter contains calories, which means that if you take it, while you're fasting, your body has to process it. And every time your body has to process something, that breaks your fast, okay? Yes, it does keep you in ketosis because you're taking in full fat. And if you're trying to lose weight, would you rather have your body burn butter or burn your own body fat for energy? The answer is pretty obvious. And another crutch that people use are artificial sweeteners. And this is another big one. I'm talking about drinking Diet Coke or Diet Soda or any drink that's branded as having zero calories. And I have another video that talks about this in further detail, but this is all you need to know about drinking Diet Soda. This whole belief that drinking Diet Soda, zero calories, and Diet Coke is somehow better for you is probably one of the biggest lies in the fitness industry. That and everyone believing that fat is still bad for you. And I have another separate video that debunks that myth. Here's all you need to know. Your body doesn't count calories. You have no calorie counter in your stomach. Your body, however, has a physiological response to these zero calorie drinks. It doesn't get a free pass. I mean, nothing that sweet gets a free pass once it enters your system. And one of those physiological responses is a spike in insulin levels. And when you trigger an insulin response, you've just broken your fast. Your body now goes into fat storage mode because your body thinks that there's food coming in because you're drinking Diet Coke, even though it's zero calories. And that's where the term empty calories comes from. But there's actually no food coming in, right? Because you're drinking Diet Coke. So your body then activates the hunger hormone ghrelin and it makes you crave food even more. So as you can see, Diet Coke and Diet Soda does more harm than good. There's also a lot of studies out there that Diet Coke, drinking Diet Coke, destroys your gut microbiome and is directly linked to obesity. Listen, the whole point of fasting is, you know, you want to create periods where you're taking a break from eating. It's not about gaming the system by using crutches like artificial sweeteners and drinking diet sodas. Number four, you're not fasting long enough. Let's get one thing straight out of the way here. If you're just fasting for 12 hours, you're just breaking even. What I mean by that is if you're, you know, eating three meals a day, you eat your breakfast at 8 a.m., you eat your lunch, and then you eat dinner at 8 p.m., you're pretty well balanced, right? So you have a 12-hour eating window, and then you have a 12-hour fasting window. You need to fast a minimum of 14, preferably 16 hours, if you wanna start seeing results. There's a lot of studies out there that the benefits of fasting actually doesn't start until the 16-hour mark. That's why the 16-hour fast is one of the most popular ways of intermittent fasting and it's also one of the easiest ones to follow because if you skip breakfast, that automatically extends your fast and if you eat lunch at noon and then you eat your dinner at seven and you're done eating by eight, then that gets you your eight hour eating window. And if you have a lot of weight to lose, you need to start fasting longer. Listen, you're not gonna die. The average person is carrying around 100,000 calories worth of stored energy in the form of body fat. If you want to lose weight, you need to tap into your fat stores for energy. And you achieve that by, again, fasting for a minimum of 16 hours every single day. Number five, you're throwing in the towel way too soon. And this goes back to just, you know, having realistic expectations when it comes to how long you're going to reach your goals. Listen, it didn't take you a week or a month to put on the weight that you're trying to get rid of. What makes you think that a couple of days or a week of fasting is going to magically get rid of all that excess body fat? It doesn't work that way. Listen, you need to start slow on this, okay? There are levels to this. And a lot of people throw in the towel right away when they do intermittent fasting because they think it's too hard. I mean, you can't just go from zero to 100 on this, especially for somebody who typically eats all day, you graze on food all day from the moment you wake up until you go to bed. If you're somebody who's used to eating six small meals a day, maybe just try to reduce that to five meals a day and then four meals a day. And then you eat three meals like a normal human being. And then after that, you start eating a late breakfast. 
okay? You adjust that an hour every single day until you get used to not eating breakfast. And then eventually you just wanna have an eight hour eating window. And in that eight hour eating window, you're eating a lot of nutrient dense foods. Again, you revolve your diet around plants and animals and you're eating a lot of healthy fats and high quality protein. And think of fasting like a muscle, okay? The more you use it, the better you get at it. Okay, the next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you wanna lose weight? Because let's be honest, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I wanna give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach and turned it into a six pack without going on a crazy diet or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four step process specifically designed for busy professionals just like you. And it's the exact same blueprint that I teach all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you wanna be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's gonna be a link in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Follow me on Instagram, my handle's at the top, and subscribe to my channel. I post a new video every Friday. And hey, leave me a comment if you have any questions about this video. All right, thanks for watching. Virtual high five.